Welcome back guys to Phoenix Wright Spirit of Justice where last episode we came out once again into another investigation phase as we've just spoken to Miss Wyatt here and now move onwards to the mooring dock to investigate more now that we know the time travel was of course a trick by the Sprocket family. Let us go to the mooring dock. Let us move on. What more is there to find about this situation? Probably involving this broken stuff, maybe? So, where should we start? Hmm, let's see. Are there any places we haven't examined yet? We already investigated the reception hall and Sprocket Manor. I know, we haven't looked at the Vista deck or the hold yet. Hey, you're right! We've still got some pretty important places left to examine, don't we? The Vista deck is the actual scene of the murder, right? And the lantern with the body in it was stored in the hold. I think there's a good chance we'll find some important clues in those locations. Do we know how to get to the hold? Good question. I think it was labelled in that diagram of the airship in this pamphlet. There it is! Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go! Well, you're not going to actually make me go there. You're just going to zoop me there right now. We didn't have to find our way around this world. We didn't have to use our feet. No, sir. Point, click, and we're off. So this is the hold. This is where Pierce orchestrated the whole cover-up operation. We'd better go over this place with a fine tooth comb. Hey, Nick. When were we supposed to need a key card to get in here? Ah, you're right. I wonder why it was unlocked. How's it going, Mr. Wright? Emma, what are you doing here? Just a little independent investigating, for my own sake. Got to keep the mind sharp. Ah, so the door security system was turned off for the police investigation. Or was it? We'd like to investigate the hold ourselves. Would that be alright? Yeah, sure. The police just finished their examination anyway. Thanks. We'll just take a quick look around them. Oh, right! You should know that the floor doubles as a huge lift. You can use that lever way back there to raise it up to the vista deck. The police inspected it already, but didn't find anything of particular interest, it seems. If you do go up to the Vista deck with a lift, be careful not to fall off. Got it. Thanks. That goes double for you, Maya. Yes, ma'am. Well, let's get this show on the road. Come on then, Emma. Before we investigate, we of course want more information from you. Any progress for your investigation? Nothing conclusive yet, I'm afraid. Almost everybody was involved with the cover-up, so it's hard to know who or what to believe. I know what you mean. Unless you have some compelling evidence, I'm afraid it's going to be a tough trial for you. You're telling me? There isn't much time left, so I've just got to make do and see what I can turn up with. Must be more to get out of you in the future then, but probably after our examination. Hello, engine. Of some sort. So this is the airship's engine. It's pretty impressive. And it's all rhythmic, like a heartbeat. It's the literal heart of the flying chapel. Look at all those huge gears spinning around and 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 around. And around and around. Uh, I think I'm starting to get dizzy. Yeah, me too. That's the engine. We've got gears, the Vista Deck sign, the flowers. These are the flowers we saw in Larry's photo. The petals make them look like little gears. Perfect flower for the Sprocket family, huh? Maybe they were going to shower the couple with the petals. You mean kind of like how people throw rice or confetti? Yeah, like that. Only these were found at the scene of a murder instead. What else have we got here? These must be the dishes and glasses they use for receptions. Very fancy. I bet we'd be in big trouble if we broke any of them. Oh, I want to see Nick. You young lady need to stay far, far away from them. Nick! You think I'm going to break them, don't you? Let's just say your rap sheet for breaking things doesn't help your case. Indeed it does not. This is the elevator itself. Oh, it's a cake, Nick. Oh, I didn't scan that. I thought I was looking at the gears. It's a, it's a cake! It's so big, they wouldn't miss one little piece, would they? 
If you're that in the mood for a mouthful of styrofoam, sure, knock yourself out. You mean it's not real? Well, she sure fooled me. I was so ready to have some that I'm really craving cake now. Come on, Nick. Let's go get some. Maybe after the trial is over. Gotta celebrate later, you know. I thought that was that we were scanning. Oh, look. There's the lever to the lift Emma told us about. Let's try going up on it. I'll go flip the switch. Here goes nothing. Wait, I'm not even on it yet. Oh. Hey, Maya, stop the lift. Whoops, sorry. I got a little carried away. Never mind that. Move over a little. Uh, okay. Is that blood? Blood? Let me see. Could it be Mr. Gloomsbury's blood? Well, this lift goes up to the Vista deck where the murder took place, so... I think that's the most logical conclusion. Well, I thought the victim was clubbed to death and that there wasn't much blood. Something tells me I'd better take a picture of this. Lift bloodstain has been added to the court record. I should ask Emma about it some more later. Maya, can you bring the lift back down now? You got it. I can flip the switch again. There. Well, Maya's messing really did help this time. Done. I want to find out some more about that bloodstain. But for now, I guess we should go up to the Vista deck and take a look around the actual crime scene for ourselves. The view must be great from up there. I bet it'll be awesome. You mean it would be if it wasn't the scene of a murder? Okay, to the Vista deck we go. Make sure you actually get on the lift this time, Nick. I know, I know. Okay, I'll just flip the switch again, and away we go! But there's more for me to examine! Like the pegaboos, the pega cows. Wow, look at the gorgeous view! So this is where Ellen was attacked, and Mr. Gloomsbury was killed. Yeesh, one wrong stack and it's cause splat on the ground below. Should we go investigate the stuff that's a little closer to the edge? Well, I don't see much of anything over there. The police investigation didn't turn up any clues either, so... Maybe we don't need to. Oh, I get it. You're scared, aren't you, Nick? Uh, of course not. Come on, let's go back down and finish checking out the hold. What a heavy duty lift to be having inside of something like this, isn't it? It looks heavy. Well, let's continue our investigation. Hmm, it looks like there are some fingerprints on this candelabra. Yeah, I just got done dusting that. I was able to pull a set of left hand prints. Do you know whose prints they are? Yes, the prints belong to the victim, Demus Gloomsbury. Nick! I just figured out something amazing! You did? Get this. If the fingerprints on the candelabra are from his left hand, then Mr. Doom and Gloom must have been less handed! What do you think of that? Do I have the makings of a great detective or what? Oh yes, your deductive reasoning skills are nearly encyclopedic. However, that's an incredibly important point. Hey, you're pretty good, Maya! I looked into it myself and sure enough, the victim really was left handed. Really? I got it right! Awesome! Hmm. Good for you, Maya. Good for you? That's all you've got to say? I, uh, think you did a real great job, Maya. Way to go! I guess one can never have too much info. Now you're talking. Ha <laughs> ha But, come to think of it, this candelabra kind of isn't in the photo Larry took of the hold, is it? That picture was taken when they were getting ready for the first reception, right? The candelabra kind of must have been brought in here sometime after that, then. Hmm. It's still possible they have something to do with the incident, though. I'd better add it to the evidence file, just in case. Okay, the candelabra from the hold bearing fingerprints from Gloomsbury's left hand, which is his dominant hand. 
Oh, by the way, Mr. Wright. You can have this fingerprint powder if you like. You've given this to us? Sure. I have four other sets. Th thanks. I feel like there's something more to the candelabra, but I can't put my finger on it. No, because you, you'll leave prints too. But no, there is something more to it. It's the left-handed factoid. A message was written by someone with a right-handed hook. What's that? A wedding bell? According to the pamphlet, it's used on the Vista Deck during wedding ceremonies to bless the newlyweds. I guess they disassemble and store it away here in the hole when it's not being used. Ooh, look, Nick! It's an airplane! I wonder if Soren built that one too. Hey, why don't we take it for a spin? Just a quick tour around the neighborhood. And who do you propose is going to pilot that wooden death trap? Me, of course. Who else? Don't worry. I've seen people fly airplanes on TV plenty of times. Um, I think I'll pass. I've still got my whole life ahead of me. Two Pega Cows. So there are two male Pegable Lanterns in the reception hall. That must mean that these two are female Pega Cow Lanterns. Larry got their sexes mixed up when he replaced the one in the reception hall, huh? Didn't you see the horns? The difference is pretty glaring if you ask me. And yet he managed not to notice. That's what makes Larry Larry. And Larry being Larry is why I've seen more than my fair share of trouble for a lifetime. Oh, Mr. Wright! You know that lantern the victim was found inside of in the reception hall? I'm just about to go piece it back together so the police can examine it. Oh, okay. We'll stop by for a look too, once you're done fixing it. There's still more to examine. What am I checking now? The serving trolley? The teacup? It doesn't really look like there's more to examine, to be honest. Have we examined everything in here? Cake, candelabra, bells with the string, pega, cow. It looks like we're done, but we're not done for the area, which can only mean... Right. Let's ask more about... Well, the blood, who it belongs to, if you know. I'm guessing you don't just yet. And the candelabra, considering you must know whose fingerprints they are. Emma, about this blood stain, doesn't something about it strike you as odd? What's the word about the victim's blood? That's not exactly... It's just something about it that bothers me. Hmm, now that you mention it, I can't say I necessarily disagree with you. Maybe I should talk about this some more with her. Oh, wait a second, the candelabra's already come up as a thing to talk about. I was wondering if we should just present that because I want to know more. Emma, can we check out this candelabra a little more? A little more? What do you... Oops. What happened? I almost dropped the candelabra and the candle slipped off. Well, let's be careful with that. It might be important evidence. Wait a minute. Now what? One of the pins that holds the candle is broken. What? There's definitely something fishy about this candelabra. There is? What makes you say that? Call it Forensic Investigator's Intuition. We already dusted this for prints earlier. So let's test it with Luminol this time. Knowing Emma, she'd use every test she has at the same time if she could. Just hang on, this will only take a second. I hope this turns up a new lead somehow. Well, Emma, did you find anything? Take a look at this, Mr. Wright. What is all that blood doing on there? Someone's been stabbed with a candelabra. Maybe somebody got hurt while they were setting up for the reception. These pins are pretty sharp. But if one of the pins is broken, it means there was some force involved. I think maybe somebody got stabbed. But nobody reported anything like that. That's quite a bit of blood. I wonder whose it is. If I have anything that might shed some light on that, I should probably show it to Emma. Okay then, I might do then. About this blood stain. What about it? There's something about it that's been bothering me. 
Oh yeah, what's that? Well, there's a huge bloodstain on the crime scene lift. And a bloodstained candelabra. Now this is only a guess, but I'm thinking maybe these two bloodstains are from the same source. I'm thinking maybe these two bloodstains are from the same source. Hmm, I guess that is a possibility. Can we compare the two bloodstains? Would that take a lot of time? Are you kidding? Don't underestimate the power of science. It'll be done in Jiffy. It'll be done in just Jiffy. And the results are in. That didn't take long now, did it? Huh. It seems the blood from the lift and candelabra are from the same person. A lift bloodstain has been updated in the court record. And the candelabra has been updated in the court record too. Candelabra from the hole bearing fingerprints from Glooberry's dominant left hand stained with the same blood found in the lift. We need to know definitively whose blood this is though. Well, the victim was clubbed to death and there wasn't all that much blood. But, if this isn't Mr. Gloomsbury's blood... Well, this is just a guess, but... What if Mr. Gloomsbury stabbed somebody with a candelabra pin? That would explain both the huge blood stain on the lift and the blood on the candelabra. Oh my goodness! If that's true, then that means there was somebody else present at the scene of the murder. It does, doesn't it? And this just might substantiate Ellen's statement about a third person. Emma, could you have this blood analysed? Sure thing. Hmm. A mysterious blood stain on the candelabra with the victim's prints on it. This just might be the thing to back up Ellen's memory of seeing a third person. Next up, the reception hall. It might be worth taking another look around in there. The reception hall? The forensics team is in there investigating right now. Oh, they are? Well, we don't have time to just sit around, so let's go check out something else. Good idea. We could go question some people. Especially Soren. I have quite a few questions for that guy. Sounds good, Nick. I'll also do some legwork then. Yep. I thought we'd head to Soren's house for starters. He was accompanying the police on their investigation here earlier, but he's probably home by now. Great. Thanks. Later, Emma. So we're leaving here and moving on. Some nice information. Case what busting open wide kind of information when you think about it. Let's head to the foyer then. That key card's still on the ground. I still can't get over how gorgeous Sprocket Manor is. Just don't touch anything. I I wasn't going to. She was definitely going to. I was told I had guests. Thank you for seeing us, Soren. We know you're busy. We'd like to ask you a few questions about the case, if you wouldn't mind. Um, Soren? You're Ellen's lawyer, right? Huh? Y yes, that's right. Don't tell me he doesn't remember me. Will Ellen be found guilty? We're doing everything we can to prevent that. That's why we're here, investigating. Will you please tell us what you know? Soren. Alright, fine. What was that pause all about? Information. The cover-up. It was you who gave the order for that large-scale cover-up plan, isn't that right? What large-scale cover-up? Don't play dumb with us. You held two writing receptions in order to try and cover up Mr. Gloomsbury's murder. Ellen thought that for the power of the timekeeper you built, she travelled back in time. Ah, so that's why there were two receptions. Wait, does he seriously not know why the reception was held twice? Looks like I'll have to delve deeper here. Time travel, Soren, tell us more. So the cover-up scheme, that fake trip through time? You're not the one who was behind it all. Pierce Nickety stated in court that you were the one who ordered it to be carried out. Pierce said that. I see. I leave him in charge of everything around me. So whatever he decides is, in essence, my decision too. So I take it that you didn't know anything about the cover-up? That's none of your business. But you are in two wedding receptions in a row. And still you claim to know nothing. 
I have nothing more to say to you. Please leave. But Soren! Ow! Oh, there's something written on this paper airplane. Let's see. Go away. It doesn't get clearer than that, huh? He's looking especially uncooperative, but maybe I can grab his attention somehow. I still have one piece of evidence I don't know much about. It's worth a try. Which one piece? I mean, we could try the startling thing and go down the list. Sorry, have you ever seen this before? That's... Wait, bingo? That's... Sorin. What is it? N nothing Why did his whole demeanor change all of a sudden? He's gone pale as a ghost too. And he's out. S Sorin! Nick, look at his stomach! He's bleeding! S somebody help! Sorin's collapsed! Master Sorin! Came to the hospital! Quickly now! Poor Sorin. That must be one serious wound. Hmm. What is it, Nick? Well, when I showed him the candelabra, his whole demeanor changed. So I was just thinking that maybe his injury is. Huh? What's this? It's Sorin's notebook. He must have dropped it in a rush to get him to the hospital. Oh. His notebook, huh? I wonder what's written in it. Don't you? Come on, you know you want to take a peek. Soren's notebook. What to do, what to do. I feel guilty snooping around in somebody's personal notebook, but maybe we should take a little look-see. Oh, so by the way, just before we go on, so Soren's obviously been stabbed by the candelabra. Probably when he confronted Gloomsbury, it lo looks now very much that Sorin was the one who killed Gloomsbury to defend his future wife. Or wife, to have whichever way you want to put it. But the needle has snapped off of the candelabra, so inside him, that's why the wound isn't healing very well. Or, you know, it, it, it's wiggling around, isn't it? He's got a prong inside his wound. Maybe we should take a little look-see. Whoa, it's filled with big words written in tiny letters. I guess he uses this notebook to write down his invention ideas. Huh. What is it? Did you find something? Huh. After March 8th of last year, the, cont the content of this notebook changes dramatically. Like how? Well, ever since that date, soren has been writing down every detail of his life. As in every. Maybe he decided to start keeping a diary. This is way too detailed to be an ordinary diary. Hmm, Ivory's really compulsive. Or maybe just plain forgetful. But is it really as simple as that? I feel like something happened on March 8th that made Soren change. Well, why don't you let me take a look at that and I'll tell you. Hey, Maya, let go or we'll rip it! Huh? Now look what you did, you dropped it! You should've just let me take a look! How is this my fault? Oh no, Nick! Ha! Huh. It fell into that pool of Soren's blood! I can't read a thing on these two pages now. Uh oh. You're gonna get it now. Ugh. I guess it really is my fault after all. Let's just put it away carefully for now. I can't let anything else happen to it, you hear? Right, so there was some probably really good information. And then we've ruined it. Thank you, Maya. That was you. Soren's notebook has been added to the court record. Hmm. Hey look, there's something sticking out of the notebook. It looks like a newspaper article. Let's see. It's about the car accident Soren's sister died in. It happened on March 8th? That's the day Soren's notebook completely changed. Oh wow. What else does it say? It says the driver at the time of the accident was... Dumas Gloomsbury. It says Soren was in the car too and that he had sustained severe injuries. It's just like Pierce said. Soren completely changed after the accident. 
So a newspaper article has been added to the court record, detailing the car accident that resulted in Selena Sprocket's death. So Gloomsbury was driving the car when the when they got into that accident. That opens up the distinct possibility of a Soren holding a grudge against Gloomsbury. You think Soren could have? I don't know. It's not like I have any proof. We should talk to Pierce about this when we return Soren's notebook to him. Though he doesn't seem to be here right now. Maybe he's at the Flying Chapel. So, over we go yet again. Though, as I'd say, this is still on the ground. No one has picked it up. Not here, because otherwise the music would have changed, right? Oh, well, now it does. Just the loading for a DLC takes a lot longer, it seems. I sure hope Pierce is around here somewhere. Ah, Mr. Ryder Miss Faye. Hello, Pierce. We were just looking for you. I'm sorry for Master Soren's sudden departure earlier. You have my sincerest apologies. It was totally understandable. Really? But shouldn't you be at his side right now? It's fine. The other servants are with him, and I'm in constant contact with him. Do not forget to give him his pain medication, and be sure to keep him hydrated. Also, see to it that he is not up and about. He needs complete bed rest. Is this what happens when you're too rich for normal peasant phones? I must return to Master Soren now, but... Did you want something of me? Actually, here's Soren's notebook. He dropped it when he collapsed. I hope Pierce doesn't notice the bloodstain. Oh, thank you very much for this. I will see to it personally that Master Soren gets it back. Thank you. Soren's notebook has been given to Pierce. I trust you did not look inside. Oh, of course not. <laughs> uh, uh, because it's filled with numerous pattern-worthy ideas, you see. Look, I know you're busy, but would you mind if I asked you a few questions about the case? Well, as I said, I must be getting back to Master Soren. So if you could make it quick, I would greatly appreciate it. Alright, I'll make this as quick as I can. Well, let's talk about the cover-up. I'd like to ask you about the cover-up you tried to pull off, if you don't mind. I told everything there is to tell in court already. Disposing of anything that may harm the Sprocket family's reputation is simply a part of my job. Sounds like a lovely job description. I have nothing more to say on the matter. I will say, I do not think it's wise to spend more time on topics that have already been discussed. Right, well it's the whole disposing of things that may ruin their reputation. That's the crazy thing, like disposing of Ellen. I right, moved on to the accident. Yes, could you tell us more about this accident? Where did you find that? And did I not already tell you about that accident? You did, but you conveniently left out one crucial detail. The fact that Dumas Gloomsbury was driving the car at the time. Oh, did I not mention that? I suppose it simply did not come up then. If Mr. Gloomsbury caused the accident, why didn't the Sprocket family fire him? Wouldn't that usually be the natural consequence of such a huge mistake? Please do not misunderstand, Gloomsbury stayed on with the family. On Master Soren's request. What? That is the type of person Master Soren is. Perhaps it was the influence of Miss Selina's kind nature. She was such a sweet person, and even in her last moment, she thought of Master Soren. Not only did Soren not hold a grudge against Gloomsbury, he insisted on keeping him on. Now I really don't understand how that guy's mind works. Right, we got ourselves Selina's last moments. So you were present for Selina Sprocket's last moments? Yes, in my professional capacity. The accident happened on the way to a certain party. And what kind of party was it? It was Miss Selina's engagement party. Bloomsbury's injuries were minor, but Miss Selina's and Master Sorin's were critical. They were brought to the Sprocket family's regular hospital. Wow, to have such a terrible thing happen on what was to be a day of celebration. 
Thanks to surgeon in charge, Master Soren pulled through. But Miss Selina, she... The last words Miss Selina said to me were... Please help Soren. Ever since then, I have attended Master Soren and tried to help him any way I can. I see. Selina's fiance must have been devastated. Indeed. The shock of losing Miss Selina was so great he quit being a surgeon. He was a surgeon? Wait, so the surgeon who tried to save them both, was he... Yes, he was Miss Selina's fiance. What a terrible tragedy. How awful. So where is her fiance now? Mm-hmm. Good question. I wonder that sometimes myself. So Selina had a fiance. I'd like to find out more about him, but I doubt I'll find him anytime soon. Will we not? So, are we done here? I'm afraid I must be going. Could you please just tell me a little more about Sorin? There was nothing more to tell. I can't seem to get any real answers out of him just by asking him questions. There is that piece of evidence I still don't know much about. What, the candelabra again? Maybe you'll be able to tell me something about it. Well, we'll find out more next time on Phoenix Wright, Spirit of Justice. As I think we might have a small inkling as to who this fiancé may be. Tune in next time to maybe find out. See you then. Bye-bye.